Hello, my name is Laura Mosqueda, and I'm delighted that we can show you what the next phase of your training could look like. Tech School of Medicine, we pride ourselves on challenging paradigms and thinking outside of the box. The amount of exposure that we get as students at LA County and Keck and all these different sites is incredible. The training you get here is as hands-on as it could be. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Good morning. Oh, do you have the CT scan? Yeah. Let's pull up that CT scan. So this is the CT scan from the first day. We take on the toughest challenges, the toughest cases. We take on the biggest questions for research to try and make a difference and improve human health. We are smack in the middle of it all, right here uh, in this health sciences campus. So we have a county hospital right across the street that has incredible, not only inpatient, but ambulatory facilities. Right across the street in the other direction, we have our Keck Hospital with wonderful ambulatory and outpatient surgery sorts of facilities. Then on my right, we have our Norris Comprehensive Cancer Hospital. And then just across the street, we have our major research buildings too. Research and education are really the foundations upon which everything else at the School of Medicine is, is founded on. You have multitudes of opportunities to do bench work, uh, clinical research, translational research, and really take your work from the bench side to the bedside. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lauren. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. I'm well, thanks. Good morning. This week, in fact, we've had a sickle cell patient, an aplastic anemia patient who came for treatment. We get uh, TTP patients. We have three to five autologous stem cell transplant patients on at any given time. I've been here 44 years, and there's two common foundational principles. Number one, patient interest supersedes self-interest. This is absolutely critical. Your levels are coming down, looking good. Um, so you're thinking discharge? Yeah, I think you can go home today. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second is that this is a teaching center, and we talk about the very famous professors that are here to teach you. But the one thing everybody learns is that the master teachers are the patients themselves. And so, sir, we're gonna show you what you actually had before and after, okay? okay? This is what you came in with. <laughs> That's what you came in with. <laughs> Nearly locked out that entire lung, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You must have a passion. Part of your mission is to take care of the underserved. We are serving the underserved. We are serving those that are more socioeconomically advantaged. But essentially, you want to serve everyone and everybody and serve them the same, regardless of who they are. So who's our next patient? In here? Yeah. Go yes. Go. These are the patients that, you know, it's not just a pleasure to serve, it's an honor to serve. They're my people. It's, I see myself reflected in the, in the population. I really wanted to come back home in more ways than one. This could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my uncle. Um, and no other place could afford me that opportunity besides here. It's been a, the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life, being here. Uh, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think were possible. We're looking for that spark, that spark in a person that's going to become a good physician who's going to put the patient first. Can we get Dr. Dixon here, please? Can we get some backup? No matter how dramatic this scenario is, it's something that happens. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. We are pretty much in the ORs from day one. We do cases that other places um, just read about in textbooks. You really want to care for the caregiver. Um, our goal is to prevent burnout before it even happens. It takes about eight months till you start thinking, I can do this, I can master this. Do you see anything worrisome about it? Anything new? No, I don't. This is not a movie, this is for real. Can you show us two fingers? It's really important that not only do they listen to what the attending has to say, 
but equally important, the attending needs to listen to what the resident has to say. Show me where your pain is. We're here to learn there's no dumb questions ever. We really want an inclusive environment where you can be the thought and the change leader on our campus. If you come to USC, you will be part of a close-knit, collaborative Trojan community. It's so important to know that you're part of the Trojan family. That's not just a catchphrase here, it's something that we really mean. We care about the people who are here. We care about you after you leave. It's a lifelong commitment on our part. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming together. My name is Helena Chu, and I'm the chair of the department. It's been a, a pleasure and it's an honor. I've been chair for uh, 17 years, and I've seen the department grow, okay, from like 12 residents to 18 residents, and from maybe six fellows to 12 fellows. You're all here for uh, different uh, subspecialties. We have about 10 subspecialties in critical care, neurology and stroke, epilepsy, uh, headache and general neurology, Parkinson's and movement disorders, uh, ALS, neuromuscular disorders, Alzheimer's disease and memory disorders, uh, multiple sclerosis and neuroimmunology, uh, rehab in both inpatient and outpatient. Our history goes back uh, over 100 years. Uh, we started out uh, as a training program at uh, the General Hospital. It's kind of famous on TV, LA County. We've been like a family between neurology and neurosurgery. And I think that's been the key because kind of with pride, uh, we are number 19 by US News and World Report for neuroscience. So that's, you can hold your head up high when you say you trained it. USC. It's kind of hard for me to believe, number 19. During the past 10 years, the university has made major investments in neuroscience. Our NIH funding ranking moved from uh, number 30 to number 4. Uh, so we have, just looking out the window, the Zilka Neurogenetics Re Research Institute, and right there, the Broad Stem Cell Regenerative Medicine Institute. We have the Stevens uh, Neuroimaging and Informatics Institute, uh, a beautiful space with of lights. It looks like a spaceship. There's over 15 faculty members there, and they're part of the Department of Neurology. If you're interested in uh, research, um, we have a lot of opportunities here. And we've come a long way in the 17 years I've been here. Our goal is still to train the best experienced, skilled, compassionate uh, clinicians. Welcome to our academic community and home and to our family. Um, your program director's doors and my doors always open to you. Hi, my name is Danielle Feigenbaum and I am one of the movement disorders attendings in the Department of Neurology at the Keck School of Medicine. So one of the things that I liked about this uh, fellowship program was that there's five movement disorder trained attendings. So as part of movement disorders, you know, the exam, seeing patients, all that is really an art. Good. And then let me have you do the heel to toe walk with me. So come towards me and you're going to walk heel to toe. It's one of the last few arts left in neurology. So having exposure to five different attendings and how they do things differently, um, how they do things the same, you kind of get to create your own art of seeing patients and doing things. There's usually one fellow per year. Yeah. And you can choose to do a one year or a two year program. So I chose to do a two, but it's possible to do a one if that's what you want. You know, if you want to go into clinical practice, um, one year is, you'll be ready. But if you want a little more research or academia, then a second year is helpful. So as a resident, you get exposed to it all. So when I was a resident here, I did get some exposure to movement disorders, and that's how I knew about the fellowship and decided to stay on. Movement disorders is really um, watching the patient and kind of hearing their history. So it's still, um, you know, the neuro exam is still a big part of it. And then a lot of these patients have chronic diseases, so you get to know them over time and get to be with them for decades, if not longer, meet their family. You get to connect with people, and you get to connect with people that you probably wouldn't otherwise. I mean, movement disorders affects poor, wealthy, famous, you know, undocumented, everybody. So you get to meet everybody and get to know them over time, hear their stories, hopefully help them, hopefully help their family, kind of get that connection because we work at both the private Keck facility and the public LAC County facility, there's a huge diversity of patients. 
in addition to that, there's just a large volume with the five movement disorder specialists. So you get to see all kinds of patients um, from Parkinson's disease to the dystonias to the atypical Parkinsonian syndromes, all the cerebellar ataxias. Um, and you get to see people who are very aware of their health condition and health literate and come in right away and people who have been undiagnosed for decades and you know are just seeking care for the first time. So it's kind of the diversity plus just a large volume. So it is a very unique opportunity, which is one of the things I loved about residency and then obviously staying on, loved about fellowship is you get a, you know, you get the routine kind of what we call bread and butter things that you get really good at, but then you get to see these unique cases that you probably wouldn't see elsewhere. There's reward to getting certain diagnoses and people who have been undiagnosed for so long, um, even if it is a kind of devastating disease. So I had a woman with cerebellar ataxia and all kinds of problems um, psychiatrically and cognitively, and she was undiagnosed for probably three decades. And long story short, we diagnosed her with Neiman Pick uh, type C, which is not that common. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't able to offer much, but it was rewarding just to have a diagnosis. And then there's other patients, you know, with say Parkinson's disease who are miserable, they can barely walk, they can, you know, they have severe tremor, they can't talk. Um, and by adjusting their medications or doing a surgery we call deep brain stimulation surgery, we can kind of restore their quality of life. So that's rewarding. But we have three neurosurgeons here who specialize in the deep brain stimulation. And so we can go to the OR and help them out, but we're not surgically doing it. But afterwards, I, I can do all the programming. So you can adjust various settings to, to treat the patient's various symptoms. I mean, there is a structured fellowship. So if you just want to get, you know, see a broad diversity of patients and feel very comfortable with movement disorders, you know, one year you can do that. Um, but there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of support if you have a special interest in clinical research, um, joining clinical trials. If you have an interest in pediatrics, we're affiliated with CHLA, you can go and join some of the pediatric movement disorder specialists. Or if you have a, you know, spe special interest in the deep brain stimulation surgery, you can go to the OR when any of your patients are getting the surgery, you can do research with the DBS surgeons. So there is a structured program, but there's a lot of flexibility if there's a special interest you want to, um, to kind of foster and, and get better at. There's flexibility enough to make those choices. Obviously, I have a biased opinion because I did my residency here and then stayed for fellowship and then now stayed on as faculty. So the program obviously was able to provide me with that opportunity to stay in academia. So my professional goals are to continue building both my clinical um, experience and seeing patients and then also to build on some of the research that I started in residency, continued in fellowship and am continuing now. Once you've done a residency or a fellowship here, you are ready for the next phase of your career. And that might be going into clinical practice, it might be going into academia, it might be going on for more training. Whatever it is, be assured that you are going to be the most well-prepared person possible for that next part of your career.